In this lesson, you're gonna learn how to solve equations involving decimals, and we're gonna talk about an easier way to work with these by clearing the decimals. So let's go through two examples together, and I'll show you how this works. So for this first example, what you might notice is that there's a lot of decimals in this equation. Another thing you might notice is that there's really like only one decimal place. See how this is like nine tenths and four tenths and two tenths. So what we can do by, to clear the decimals is we can multiply through this whole equation by the number 10. Now the nice thing about multiplying by 10 is it moves the decimal one place to the right, making this now 9x, and that's a whole number which is a little bit easier to work with. You also wanna make sure you multiply the two by 10, and you don't see the decimal, that means it's understood to be right here on the right side. So if I move that one place to the right, this is actually gonna make this 20, because I have to put a zero as a placeholder. Same thing here, if I multiply this guy by 10, that's gonna give us 24x, and then this guy, we multiply by 10, that's gonna give us 82. Now, the reason this works is we're keeping the equation balanced. It's like we're multiplying the left side by 10, and we're also multiplying the right side by 10. And so it's keeping the equation balanced. Just make sure you multiply every single term by that number 10. Now it's a little bit easier to solve with these whole numbers here. Let's get the variables on one side and the numbers on the other side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna subtract 24x from both sides. So that's gonna give us a negative 15x. And then I'm gonna add 20 to both sides. So that's gonna cancel out and give us 102. Okay, now we just wanna solve for one of our variable by dividing by negative 15. And let's see, so x equals a negative. How many times does 15 go into 102? Well, let's see, seven times 15 is 105. That's a little too much. So this is gonna be six times. 15 times six is 90 with 12 left over. So that's gonna be six and 12 fifteenths. We can reduce the 12 uh, fifteenths by dividing by three. That's gonna come out to negative six and four fifths. You could also write this as negative 6.8, since four divided by five is uh, 8 tenths. Let's take a look at number two now. Now number two is a little bit different because notice we have two decimal places. We've got tenths and hundredths. Uh, same thing here, tenths and hundredths. So what we can do here is let's multiply through the whole equation, not by 10, but by 100. And the nice thing about multiplying by 100 is it moves the decimal two places to the right. If you multiply by 1,000, it moves it three places to the right. But in this case, we really only need to move it two places. This is a little bit trickier problem because you see how this whole quantity, it's like a group. So when we multiply this group by 100, we're just gonna move this decimal point, not the, on the three, not on the y, just on the 0.13. So that's gonna give us 13 uh, y minus three. And here we're gonna move the decimal two places. That's gonna give us eight y. And here, the decimal point is right at the right side of the number. We're gonna move that two places to the right which is gonna give us 500. Okay, now we've cleared the decimals. This is a little bit easier to work with. Let's go ahead and do our distributive property. That gives us 13y minus 39. And then we wanna get the variables on one side, numbers on the other. So let's go ahead and get the variables on the left by subtracting 8y from both sides. That's gonna give us 5y. Then we're gonna add 39 to both sides to get the numbers on the right. So that's gonna give us 539. And lastly, we just wanna solve for one of our variable. So instead of multiplying by five, let's divide both sides by five. And let's see, five goes into 539 how many times? Looks like 107 with four left over. So you could say 107 and four fifths, or if you wanted to write it as a decimal, that would be 107.8 and you got it. So great job. If you wanna see another example, not working with decimals, but fractions where you clear the denominators, another nice technique for solving equations, follow me over to that video I did right there, and we'll get some practice with that. I'll see you over there.